Um, now this exercise is trying to get that serratus anterior going, but also her pattern of movement from abduction all the way above her head because she can't do it when she's standing. So we've got to get it unloaded and get her lying down. So in this position, you can see it's looking all right. Now, what she's doing with this arm, she's monitoring what she's, what she's feeling for here, whether she's feeling for her shoulder blade, and making sure that shoulder blade doesn't come down too quickly when she comes down. But as she goes up, what she's got to think about, she's putting a bit of pressure through the hand here. Okay, so she's loading up a bit of pressure here. And what that's doing is giving her that protraction, that serratus control lying down, so she, she can do that lying down. As she raises her arm up, She's got to try and not let that shoulder wing out, which means if she can feel here, she doesn't want that shoulder coming towards her, she wants it abducting away. So as she rotates her hand outwards and upwards, she's got to think about her shoulder blade doing the same thing. So following that hand and staying outwards rather than crashing inwards. So keep going for me, Sarah. And she, there she is trying to come inwards, it's trying to come in, so she's got to keep setting it outwards that way and she'll get the point where she's coming up too far and she's going to have to re there reset her shoulder keep going through that again from reset there it is okay so she's got to consciously do that because her automatic pattern is not really happening for her at the moment come down again and again as she comes down the shoulder needs to rotate out and down and then come in and back towards the midline in here, and she's doing pretty well there actually. <laughs> this is what helps when, when, you, when you do your homework, you see. So up you go again. Now, see how it wants to come in? She wants, it wants to come in, so she's got to keep thinking about pulling it out. And it, sometimes it's helpful if I can help her there and get her down and give her some guidance. And that's a lot better when you guide her to help her just get that pattern of movement back in her head because not only do you need the stress into your working isolated, you've just got to get that pattern of movement you know, going again and all of a sudden you know, she'll find that once she's got her motor control back a little bit, things improve and they just compound and away you go. So her, this is one of her main exercises is getting her hand above her head, which is a very functional important thing to do, but getting the correct movement as she goes and that little bit of load through her hand just helps her keeping that serratus anterior engaged. Yeah, that's it, okay. And this also helps with her lower traps so that's working as well as she tries to depress the shoulder blade when she comes down. It's very important that those two work together. But just remember, it's not about the rhomboids, okay? So it's not about pulling your shoulder blade back or anything like that. We do work on some of those muscles because they will be a little bit weak as well. Um, but the main focus is trying to get her shoulder blade protracting and flat on her scapula, on her rib cage, and then getting her pattern of movement correct as well. Just drop that down. Now, if you come up into all fours for me, Sarah. So, the last thing um, for her this week is all fours. Now, when she, she obviously can't do a one arm scapula press in four points, it's that's too hard for her. You can see, have a jump up and look at this. When she goes on all fours, there's your winging coming out now. You can really see that now. So when she's sort of just in a relaxing state, but that's, that's what load does to her. So her load is her body weight on her shoulder. Now, we're going to try and correct that manually. Try and push this up the ceiling for me, Sarah. So she struggles a little bit with that. So at this point, four point for her is too much. So we're going to have to stay to the wall on this one where there's not as much gravity going on because you can see, just come up, can you go up higher? She can't correct that. Okay, so there's no point trying to push this one until we get the wall one sorted, um, which we did before. And once we've got this one, then she'll work on one arm raise and then she'll work on going up and down. Just see if you can retract that for me, drop down. Good, now push up the ceiling. So we might be able to start a little bit of that, but definitely the wall stuff first, and then we'll progress this once this is a little bit better. Okay, now I'm just gonna snapshot this for you guys because we've actually got Sarah self-curing and just getting this a bit fatter. Just do that again for me, Sarah. What she does is she engages her core. See that? And now she's got that a little bit flatter. So just getting her lower back a little bit flatter and switching on her core muscle system, she's improving here. Just let that core go again for you. 
Yeah, now switch it back on. There it is, see that? Okay, so she just, she had a little bit of activation. That's all we need to start with. Now, so she can start doing that. That's her static work. She's gonna start working on that. She'll do like 30 second holds with this because you, there it is, hold it there for me. Now watch this. You raise this left arm for me. You watch what happens here. Can you see what happens with load? So she really wings out over there. All right, so the load of raising one arm is too much for the moment. There it is, there she can reset it. So that's where we're gonna start, okay? So it's a four point start without even raising the arm and then we'll progress. Once she's done that for a little bit, maybe next week she'll be able to start raising the arm because she'll have enough activation in here.